I, I use the WD because it's the WD stands for water displacement. It removes the water, so that's how it stops the squeaks. That's how it does drives out moisture. That's why I use it. It's really, really humid up here. I put it on the wheels to push out a lot of the moisture. I grease the bearing fitting. I I use this on everything else that moisture would hang up. I'm not a sawyer yet. I don't have enough hours on this machine to give anybody any advice. That is not my position. I'm not trying to mislead anybody into thinking I'm something I ain't. I have never owned one of these mills. This is the first one. I do, however, I have, however, for a lot of years, I ran a CNC on route, a CNC, a, 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 a CNC computer numerically controlled made by C.R. Onshrew in Troutman, North Carolina. Now I ran that in a different part of North Carolina and I have extensive experience with that and zeroing it, X, Y, Z, blah, 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 parameters and, and everything else, tools, uh, repairs, I did it all. Um, I, didn't have any, I don't have any experience in sawing raw timber. It was already dimensional and ready for me to put on my machine in slabs. I'm not going to give any advice on that. I'm going to do the best that I can. And in a couple of years, when I feel that I have something valuable to say to the people, I will. But until then, I'm a novice on this, doing the best that I can with a tape measure and some construction experience. I'm making what I need. That company that I worked for built early learning furniture and uh, I ran a CNC, I loaded raw materials on there and made parts. I ran, um, ran them into the other part for finishing and uh, some building. So we built a lot of furniture and it was always out of birch, it was out of Russian birch at the time, that's what we had. So I'm familiar with that. Uh, not so much spruce, but some of that they said there was Birch looks like this spruce here. Um, that is just something completely different from running the CNC. They ain't these two things are not alike. Right.
of it forward and that tooth to get a good bite on it. So difficult to, to work. <laughs> I gotta see that because I don't like it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I gotta see that because I don't like it. Yeah, that's about right, man. <laughs> Not to say that we don't like that we don't enjoy the winter time. I mean, it's kind of that kind of don't make no sense to move to one of the most snow places in the world and not like snow, but. Just throws a real big wrench at us being able to get things done. Gotta hurry, hurry, hurry. Every chance you get. Come on, now. Turn loose on me. The traffic you hear in the background, yes, you definitely hear traffic in the background. We've got a couple of good acres up here, but you can't get too far up off the road. You, you're responsible for removing all that snow back down to the road. Um, just because you hear traffic don't mean we're in any type of populace. We are way out there. I mean, we need to go way that way on the property, but we can't quite get there. I mean, we're 60 miles from one place and 180 miles from the next. So we're slap dab in the middle of nowhere, but everybody has to drive past us, kind of. And there ain't nothing you can do to get away from that unless you're at a place where, man, you need a snow machine for miles, for miles off the road to get to that. But that's, there's still no utility here or anything like that out this far yet. Not much, not much. And no water. You could probably get some electricity. If so, you want to be plugged into the grid. Decision we'll make sometime in the future. Not right now. We don't even know where the house is going to be. Want to say hello to everybody? There could be hundreds of people looking at you right now, girl. Hi, what you got to say? Oh, you want to do the talking? You want to talk? What you got to say? No, it's not lunchtime yet. No, it's not lunchtime yet for sure. Huh? Not yet. No lunch today. <gasps> yeah, what they, what they used to say, hope you got your lance in your pants. Yeah. <laughs> hope you got your lance in your pants today.
that that's the stuff right there that you really don't want to be cutting with, with the mill all that mud it's really well, not good for it remember one of them viewers now we're getting about seven eight hours per blade i'd like to do better than that one of the viewers i don't know who it was he said you're going to learn about that dirty log <laughs> I'm, i reckon that's what he meant uh, now we're on the third blade 16 hours you do the math they're about 30 bucks a piece but See, that ain't even really the, the, the real issue. Money money is the issue, but at the same time, getting them all the way out here to where we are, there aren't any deliveries. Yeah. They had to stop on the side of the highway to deliver our mill. Yeah. And, and we had to go way down the road to do that, and it was a metal crate on the side of the highway, man. Yeah, they unloaded it with a pallet jack. They unloaded it with a pallet jack, and we had to put it on our trailer and pull it way up onto our property. That wasn't snow. It was fog on the mountain. I can see it again. Mm. Good. Yeah. So, running out of them, even after we buy a 10 pack of 300, 300 chains, they come from Canada or Oregon or somewhere. Either way, long way. Yeah. Freight is not free. It was for the mill. Uh, it's too flat rate. Yeah. There's flat rate out there. So, to get the mill is flat rate, and they did deliver it all the way from there. I mean, I don't understand. Some people say they can't deliver. Some people say they can. Yeah, it's shipped into the uh, port of Anchorage, right? It's shipped they... into Port Anchorage, and we weren't going to drive all the way to Anchorage. That's a couple hours, dude. Yeah, just... I mean, that's a long way. And at the time, we still had studs on our tire, which is illegal. Yeah, to be uh, in we Anchorage. We had snow up here. They didn't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah in Anchorage, there's actually a... A certain time that you have to have studded tires off, or they will find you like 50 bucks a tire. Well, that's everywhere. I grew up in like Pennsylvania. They, they do the same thing, and they're serious about it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I would be too. You know, taxpayers are paying for the roads. They want people tearing them up. knock these off because for me sometimes you see the what they call them bunks them green things with the stainless on it it end up right there right on top of this which will hold it up and you get you all messed up but yeah. I try to knock some of that off you know get it flat so I have a flat spot to start with which makes it a lot I use I, 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 I lose less timber that way I feel and it's easier to cut. I don't have to make multiple cuts. You get a flat spot. So I try to knock a bit of a flat spot on it. Now, I don't have any way to wash these logs. <laughs> yeah, it'd be, it'd be nice to be able to pressure wash them and then throw them on there. But That's a lot of water. Why, why am I make that mud? Yeah, we ain't got I'd be our... standing in mud. Well, yeah, that and, we, and <laughs> what, what hose are we going to tie into? <laughs> well, yeah, we ain't got a well up here yet because... Well, number one, putting a well in probably wouldn't do us any good. One, one they run on 220. Number two, it has to be inside of a place where the head will freeze. I don't, I don't know exactly how they do that up here. I don't know how they do that. In, it must be some other way. But to have a well at this point would barely be any use to us. We don't have a wood boiler yet. We don't have uh, a way to be able to keep the head from not freezing. Yeah, it and will. It's, 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 in, it's impractical. It's, when I build a house or a cabin, I'll put the I'll put the well inside of there, or I'll build a, 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 a thermostatically controlled with a boiler room. I ain't got to worry about that. But still, getting it to the house. Now think about the frost line. It, it's got to be almost in the house, I believe. Now, the viewers would know differently. Maybe if some of my viewers are in Alaska, but I don't know. What do you think, Phil? Uh, I think that a well, honestly, is kind of... I think it's not really too good of an idea here unless you're going to do it like that, like build it into the house old school like they used to. Put uh, it in the garage. Anybody who's ever watched movies like that you ever seen that scary movie where that the, you know the girl was crawling up out of the well and stuff it was under the house that, that kept the 
the well from freezing because you're going to keep the house warm. Yep. You know what I'm saying? You're going to keep where you're living warm, so that, that'll keep the water unfrozen. But here, I mean, the elements are so severe, it would be frozen for the majority of the time that we really needed it. Yeah. Need access to water all the time, but I just, I want to, it's a big expense, man. And I want to do it right. Do it right for the first time. I don't want to put the well in and then have to build a house wherever the well is. Yeah, or or then you kick maybe, yourself after. Maybe it'll have to be that way. Maybe I have to find water and then build the house around the well. You'd be kicking yourself afterwards, like man, I wish I hadn't put that. There. Dude, I've never been in a, a modern house. They have them here. Not everything is a dry cabin. This isn't. There's there's actual cities and people here <laughs> that have <laughs> normal houses like you would see in your neighborhood. How do they stop their water from freezing? How do they stop their well from freezing? I don't know that yet, so I don't have no business putting in a well. It's quite expensive. Serious business, but I ain't got that time. I'm trying to put a roof on this shipping container so I can live in it temporarily. Well, that's not funny. I never thought I'd be saying that. Never thought I'd be living in a shipping container. Never thought I'd be in Alaska. Yeah. In a shipping container. Yeah. Commercial applications, they use water to float these, so they come out clean. Probably better for the blades, but we don't have that option. Yeah, it'd be nice to have a, a team of horses or something, man, but the, hey, all um, that feed. Doug from Doug and Stacy Austria, mm -hmm. he started out with a team of horses. He did everything with a team of horses. Did they pull them? They would sure pull them. People used to log He them did up. everything then. Oh, yeah. He broke them. Yeah. I don't know if he bought them broke or he broke them, but... Wow. Yeah. I mean, that takes some dedication there. Wow. Wow. That's old I, school, I, old school. I'm <laughs> having a hard enough time trying to build structures. I don't know how I'd take that and build structures, break the horse built a barn to keep them in yeah or to fence them area because there's I, I hate to say that but i mean there's some seriously predatory animals up here that might try to take advantage well, of he's horses. in missouri yeah i mean the wolves or bears they really might try to get after your livestock up here if you're having a problem swinging an axe or a hammer i can give you some advice on that see this thumb you golfer, if you play golf, you're going to grab it like this and swing. If you're swinging a hammer, if you want to use the thumb, you're going to probably bend the nail. That's how you do that. Now, I can swing a hammer and I can swing an axe. I can give you some advice on that. take lunch real quick. Everybody says they're hungry. This is Spencer. You guys hungry for lunch? You remind me. You hungry for lunch, Corey? Oh, yeah. All right. We'll pick back up. We're going to charge the phone. That does not look like termination dust at the top of the mountain. I can't really give you guys a shot. I wish I could. It's real far away. <laughs> 